In today's video, I'm going to talk about aviation subjects, what the aviation subjects are, how many aviation subjects do you need to study to become a pilot, and most importantly, I'll also give an overview of what all can you expect to study in these subjects. So if you are ready, fasten those seatbelts because you're ready for takeoff. What's up fellow aviators and welcome back to the Flytuber, flying simplified through YouTube. My name is Ali Azhar and on this channel I talk about interesting aviation facts and aircraft knowledge. So if you are an aviation enthusiast and are interested to know more about aircrafts and flying, consider subscribing. I have three part series of how to become a pilot wali videos mein maine aviation subjects ke bare mein mention kiya tha and i had promised over there that i'll be explaining you about these subjects in more depth later on so without further ado let's get into these subjects so the first one is air navigation this is one of the two very vast subjects in aviation wherein you will be studying in a lot of detail about how to get from point a to point b इसमें आप हमारी अर्थ के बारे में पढ़ेंगे वॉट आर ग्रेटिक्यूल्स वॉट आर लैटिट्यूड्स वॉट आर लॉन्गिट्यूड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल फिर इसमें आप डायरेक्शन के बारे में पढ़ेंगे मैग्नेटिक डायरेक्शन एंड टू डायरेक्शन आर वेरी डिफरेंट एंड यू ऑल्सो स्टडी अबाउट मैप्स एंड चार्ट नाउ ये दोनों चीजें अलग होती है एल मेक अ सेपरेट वीडियो अबाउट दम बट आप ये पढ़ेंगे कि हाउ दीज आर क्रिएटेड इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस एंड देन हाउ टू इंटरप्रेट दम एंड यूज दम टू नेविगेट इन एयर ना ओनली दीज मैप्स एंड चार्ट आर इनफ फॉर यू टू नेविगेट यू ऑल्सो नीड इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स कुछ इंस्ट्रूमेंट जैसे एयरक्राफ्ट में होते हैं विच यू नीड टू नेविगेट एंड आप इस सब्जेक्ट में इन इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स के बारे में डीपली पढ़ेंगे दैट हाउ दे आर बिल्ड व्हाट आर द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल्स बिहाइंड देम एंड देन हाउ यू इंटरप्रेट डेटा एंड हाउ यू नेविगेट यूजिंग देम इन इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स में से कई सारे इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ऐसे भी होते हैं विच रिक्वायर सर्टन रेडियो इक्विपमेंट्स दैट आर फिटेड ऑन ग्राउंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी ओ आर और डीएमई और एन आई एल एस नाउ ये सब चीजें क्या होती है मैं इन सबके बारे में एक सेपरेट वीडियो बाद में बनाऊंगा बट फॉर नाउ अंडरस्टैंड दैट ऑल ऑफ दिस वर्क विद रेडियो वेव्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ विच आपको रेडियो वेव्स के बारे में अबाउट देर प्रॉपर्टीज अबाउट हाउ दे बिहेव हियर एंड अप इन द एयर एक्सेट्रा आपको ये सब चीजों के बारे में पढ़ना पड़ेगा इन नेविगेशन नाउ वॉट फ्रॉम दीज आर मेनी मोर डिफरेंट थिंग्स इन एयर नेविगेशन एंड द वीडियो विल बी वेरी लॉन्ग इस वजह से आई एम कटिंग इट डाउन हियर बट आई गेट दैट दिस इज इनफ फॉर यू टू हैव अ गुड आइडिया ऑफ वॉट ऑल यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट स्टडी इन द सब्जेक्ट इन द नेक्स्ट अप इज टेक्निकल जनरल नाउ दिस इज द अदर वास्ट सब्जेक्ट ऑफ एविएशन एंड जैसे कि आपको इसके नाम से पता चल रहा होगा इन दिस सब्जेक्ट यू स्टडी अबाउट द टेक्निकलिटीज ऑफ एयरक्राफ्ट यू स्टडी अबाउट द एयरक्राफ्ट एयर फ्रेम इट्स स्ट्रक्चर उसे कैसे बनाया जाता है and most importantly how they have redundancy in it now i made a particular video on redundancy i'll put up the link here you make sure to watch that video out and then you study about flight control surfaces there are surfaces jinki madad se aircraft ko turn kiya jata hai ya pitch kiya jata hai to change the aircraft's direction or its altitude these flight control surfaces also require a lot of hydraulic pressure to you know deflect against the huge power and force of the air flow flowing over them this ki wajah se aapko hydraulic systems ke bare mein bhi padhna padega you also have to study about other systems like landing gears wo kaise extend hote hain how they retract and about air conditioning aircraft How the temperature is controlled. You study about fuel systems. Fuel कहाँ पे store होता है? उसको engine तक कैसे feed किया जाता है? You study about emergency fire fire fighting services, for example, जैसे के fire extinguishers के type क्या हैं? Now all of these are a part of aircraft structure. But apart from this, you also have to study about the basic aerodynamics and you know principles of flight, for example, how the wing surface. generates lift and gets us airborne and up into the air you also study about stall what it is and what all causes them and you'll study about engines what are the different types of engines the training aircrafts use piston engines for example and uh, the airliners use the uh, gas turbine engines or the jet engines as they are known and you'll study how these uh, engines work and how they create that magic and propel the whole heavy aircraft forwards and up into the air the third subject is aviation meteorology now we are behind the controls of a flying machine and hence we are exposed to the mother nature and atmosphere all the time so we have to study about the atmosphere about clouds what are the different types of clouds how to identify which are the dangerous types of clouds so that you can avoid them we will also study about the changes in season and weather throughout the year we will also study about how the thermodynamic values like pressure temperature etc change over the day or with altitude for example and we will also study about wind patterns fog visibility etc apart from these we will also study about flight hazards these are the natural phenomena that impose a lot of threat and danger to flying example thunderstorms lightning 
icing and many more. We'll study what are the causes behind these dangerous flight hazards and how to avoid them. And since we live in the Indian subcontinent, we'll also have to study about the Indian climatology that is in a span of 12 months, how the weather pattern and seasons change in different parts of this beautiful country. And lastly, all of these data that I mentioned above are specified in a coded format known as a METAR or a TAF. And therefore, you will learn how to interpret this coded information so you have a good prediction of uh, what the weather is going to be on your route or at your destination airport, for example. Before we continue on with the next subject, if you like the video and find it informative, hit that thumbs up button because it motivates me to make much more good videos like this. Now, the fourth subject here on the list is air regulations. Now, just like we need to follow certain traffic rules down on the road, similarly, we have certain set rules to be followed and abide by up in the air. Now, there is an interesting concept here that different countries might have their own traffic rules, for example. Like in India mein, uh, and in UK, we use the left lane for driving, while other countries and most of the countries use the right lane for driving. But if the same thing was to happen up in the air, it would be very chaotic because there are a lot of international flights. And if the pilots fly to international destinations, mein fly karna hai, it will be very, very hectic for a pilot to learn all the different rules of all the countries that he is flying to. So as a solution and to get out of all this chaos, ICAO or International Civil Aviation Organization along with its member countries came up with a set of rules known as air regulations and all the member states and contracting states of ICAO abide by these rules. For your information, as of date, 193 countries are member states of ICAO. So now we air regulations. We study about international agreements like the ones I specified above. We study about international organizations like ICAO, IATA, etc. And we also study about the 19 annexures that the ICAO has specified and mandated. We study about air law, rules of the air that we need to abide by always. And uh, another important point here is that the countries can make a change to the ICAO specified and suggested rules but they can only do it for more stringent that is why its rules ko aur zyada strict bana sakte hain they can't loosen and you know uh, relax these rules apart from this we study about aviation terminologies aircraft lighting airport lighting about rules of flying in visual flight rules or VFR and instrument flight rules or IFR and we also study about human performance that is what all activities of humans can affect and how can they affect human performance or human health for example how can smoking uh, affect human ability to interpret data and fly an aircraft and this is also the subject where the guidelines are specified regarding which departments have what roles and responsibilities post an air crash for example and the next subject is technical specific name wise this is very similar to technical general which i specified before but wahape we study technicalities in general which can be applied to any aircraft out there but in this we study technicalities of a particular specific type of aircraft that is why it's known as technical specific now you don't need to study about all the different types of aircrafts but rather you just give examinations of those specific aircraft that you are gonna fly and do training on for example it is comparatively very shorter subject because here we only study about the dimensions of aircraft the engine types is it a propeller aircraft or a gas turbine aircraft what type of fuel it requires to fly and aircraft limitations like weight limitations, maximum speeds for example and other very basic specifications of the aircraft. While all the above examinations that I specified here are conducted by the DGCA or Directorate General of Civil Aviation which is the governing body of civil aviation here in India. But the next subject which is RTR or Radio Telephony Restricted is conducted by WPC or Wireless Planning and Coordination which is a body under Department of Telecommunications. This exam is considered to be one of the toughest and why is it so? Let's look at the pattern of examination. Now this examination is more of a practical oriented examination wherein your skills of communication over radio and radio telephony language is tested. This examination consists of two parts. The part one is the transmission part wherein you will be sitting with the headphones on and so will be your examiner behind you. You'll be having a question paper and you'll have to answer the questions and you have to use the perfect phrases according to the situation in the examination. So you'll be talking along with the examiner behind and you have to answer him verbally and also keep listening to him and simultaneously also have to keep writing the answer down in the answer sheet. I think now it's understandable why this examination is considered to be one of the toughest. So the next part two is an oral or a viva wherein you'll be asked questions by two different examiners. 
One will be from WPC who will be asking you questions from radio components, what is a super heterodyne and what's an amplifier, how do they work etc. And the other person will be from DGCA who will be asking you questions regarding flight information regions, airspaces etc. So the key here is that you need to know what the phrases and terminologies of radio telephony language are and most importantly when and how to use them. For example, one example which most of us might have heard is Mayday 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 which is a phrase to be used by a pilot who is in distress or in emergency. So those were the six aviation subjects that you need to study if you are doing your flying from India and want to become a pilot here in India. Now the point here is that if you are doing your flying from abroad then there are certain different catches to it and certain different scenarios. I'll be talking about that in a separate particular video. Now think to understand here is that the video was already becoming very long and this is just the tip of the iceberg and there is a lot more to it than this. So if you want to know further details about any particular subject then do mention in the comments below and I might uh, provide you with the information or make a video maybe on that particular subject later on. Question of the day, after having a brief gist of the aviation subjects or the lecture about aviation subjects if you want to call it that way. Comment below one subject which you think might be your favorite and one which would be very difficult for you if at all you were to step into aviation career. Alright guys that's it for this video. If you liked the video and found it informative hit that thumbs up button and do subscribe to the channel. The button will be here. Once you do so you also will get a notification bell. Press that so that you do not miss out on my further future videos. I'll be coming up with a very interesting video very soon. Until then happy landings.